Hi, I'm Cliff Grow, and welcome. We're going to have an unusual discussion today where we're going to have a back and forth with questions and answers about uh, Alaska's fiscal system and fiscal circumstances. We're going to uh, have uh, a format that allows a, uh, as I said, questions and answers and also some audience participation. Uh, at various selected times, the audience could ask questions from over there from that microphone, and uh, we'll get um, some answers from the stage. Uh, we're going to uh, have, uh, we're going to run for two hours, we hope, until uh, 1 p.m. Uh, this is on video. It's being uh, audio and video recorded, and uh, I believe will be uh, posted on YouTube. So we're going to start out by having uh, Gunnar Knapp, the man to my immediate right, introduce himself. Gunnar, please introduce yourself. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Gunnar Knapp. I'm uh, the uh, director and also a professor of economics at an uh, organization here at UAA called the Institute of Social and Economic Research, or ICER. And I've been an economist studying uh, Alaska's economy and, um, and you know, economic issues for uh, 35 years. Um, over the past two years, I've been spending a lot of my time uh, going around the state talking about the state's uh, current fiscal situation. And, um, and uh, I think everybody's aware that uh, partly because of the decline in oil prices and, and a variety of other factors, we've experienced a huge drop in oil revenues, and that's led to a, a major set of fiscal and economic issues the state is facing. So I've been going around the state uh, talking to many, many different groups um, with sort of a standard presentation called Alaska uh, Fiscal Facts and Choices. And in this presentation, I've been uh, trying to sort of outline the basic facts of, our, of the situation we have with the state's revenues, spending, savings accounts, and uh, the choices that I think we're, we're confronted with. Um, and um, in giving that presentation, I have always emphasized to the groups I'm talking with that my goal is to help provide for an informed conversation, uh, give people basic information they need so they can have a conversation. And my goal has not been to advocate for any particular choice. I think there's a very wide range of options, ways we could go that uh, reasonable people could argue for, and we're having a very wide-ranging, passionate debate in Alaska about where we should be, should be going. But I've, I've not been trying to argue what, what way to go. And I've also emphasized that the issues that we're dealing with are, are highly complex. And, um, and uh, usually in a short discussion, like an hour or so, it's really hard to get into them in any detail. We can sort of just begin with an introduction, but there's a lot of sort of extra stuff that's relevant, but there isn't time to get into. Now, um, on April 13th, uh, I participated in a panel discussion here in this room that was organized by a group at, at UAA, a large number of people in the audience, and I was one of the speakers, and I gave a shortened version of this uh, presentation. And afterwards, there was a question and answer uh, session. Um, and um, uh, at that time, uh, this gentleman, uh, Mr. Paul D. Kendall, uh, got up, and uh, he, he asked a question which is basically the following question, uh, which he later you know, put in writing. He said, uh, he said, look, you know, you guys have a discussion like this, and you guys talk about this stuff, and um, the folks out here in the audience, we don't really have a chance to participate and, and sort of in really engage with you on our views, because the time's always really short. And he said, um, and I quote, are you willing to have an on-camera, unedited, frank, open, honest, fearless, unhurried, Challenging, probing, unrehearsed, reviewing, point, counterpoint, addressing, redressing, multifaceted discussion with divergent and opposing aspects of Alaska current and future public and private infrastructures of revenue spending, diversified economies. He said, are, are you willing to, you know, engage in that kind of discussion? And I said, well, yeah. <laughs> because um, basically here's the way I look at it. You know, I'm, I have... I'm near the end of my career. I'm going to be retiring in just a couple of months. I've been privileged for 35 years to work for the University of Alaska, and, and I view I'm working for the people of Alaska, right? That's who the university is. My job is to res be responsive 
to their questions, their interests, and to the extent that I have any, any knowledge or insight to try to share it with people. So if a group contacts me and says, will you talk with us and answer, so I say, yeah. And I have talked with all kinds of groups, ranging from you know, middle school classes to rotary clubs to community councils to the legislature to chambers of con I've, various business organizations, clubs that I never even heard of. So, um, and they've called up and said, will you talk? So, I say, sure, I'll talk. And so uh, I have uh, actually no idea what Paul wants to, questions Paul wants to raise, but I'm, uh, I'm here to listen and to, you know, um, to the best of my ability, uh, try to engage in, in a frank and open discussion with you. Paul D. Kendall, could you introduce yourself? Well, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, my name is Paul, middle initial D. Kendall. Uh, I'm a political and energy activist. I mean, some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, see, I've been <laughs> referred to as Mr. Hydrogen, uh, among other things. Uh, I'm the most banned man from talk radio in the history of Alaska. I've never got to cuss, by the way. And I have a lot of opinions, and I've tried to participate in our, in our bureaucracy and in our, in our, our uh, government leadership roles as best I can. And it's, uh, I've always found it to be very challenging, quite frankly. In the meantime, uh, to go back just a little bit here to Mr. Knapp, uh, he was really too kind and generous. Uh, I challenged him to a, to a public discussion, all day public discussion with all of those words there, that thing, and then some. And, uh, but before I challenged him, I, I told him I wasn't informed in the Ras I wasn't, in I wasn't interested in the Rasmussen Society next to him or Mr. Cliff Grow of Common Ground or the other people. I was interested in, in, in uh, Mr. Gunner, if I might. Can I call you Gunner or how should I? Why don't you just call me Gunner and I'll call you Paul. Okay, I was gonna say Dr. Gunner. I, I like Dr. Gunner. Anyway, uh, Anyway, I felt I should challenge him because he seemed to have the most credible content and the most credible position. He seemed to be the point man. Because I'd gone to multiple hearings again and again and again and tried to participate and tried to argue the point, uh, tried to have an open discussion, and it just never could happen. And I, they'd go on talk radio, Vince, uh, Vince uh, Beltrami and, and some of the others, and you, you couldn't get the... Uh, Let's see, uh, Andrew Halcrow, he would berate the public for 30 minutes straight on a radio station. They wouldn't let you call in and challenge. And went to the Captain Cook, and there was Vince Beltrami and Susie from Syria, I think it was Susie, and uh, Ron Dunk of GCI and the others. And it was supposed to be an innovative, pushback, thoughtful discussion, and uh, it was not. So anyway, I tried to understand what was happening, a meeting after meeting after meeting, and, and uh, I, I consider Mr. Knapp, I do not know about Mr. Knapp, but I know of Mr. Knapp, and he is getting ready to retire. I'm a man of uh, minimal things to lose, so I thought this might be a, an interesting discussion with, uh, with, such, with, with frankness and, uh, and purity and thought and discussion. So anyway, I challenged him, he took the challenge, and uh, be careful what you ask for because sometimes you get it. And so here we are, and, and I thank Mr. Knapp for the opportunity. And uh, there's nothing rehearsed here. There's nothing pre-rehearsed. Pre there's very, very little. There's only, there was a secret moment that I asked Mr. Groh to leave the room, and I asked Mr. Gunner Knapp if I could ambush you as the audience about some new discoveries of fusion, which we think are coming on the line very quickly. And uh, if he would have, <laughs> would have been a little more excited, Instead of having this meeting, I would have shown you some of the new fusion we think is going to launch this year, which could be changed the world. There are big things moving out there. And I don't think that uh, even though he agreed to have that, I'm not sure he was comfortable. And the thought occurred to me it was an inappropriate uh, representation. So we're going to talk about the permanent fund dividend. And that, in my world, is a symptom. It's a symptom of a lot of other problems, and I intend to point that out. And uh, I guess that'll, I'm, I can't see a clock, so I don't know about my time. I may have to move my I think we should move along now and okay. pass one over your, your side. So All I'm right. going to start out with you, uh, um, um, Paul. Could you ask Gunnar the first question you'd like to ask him? Well, before we do that, can I, uh, in trying to arrange this historical moment and, and Gunnar's fearlessness, uh, I want the public to participate. I go to so many meetings, and we hear a panel and a panel and a panel, and and the one, one, one person will ask the question, and for the next 35 minutes, the panel has to give their opinion. And 
So the way we're supposed to structure this is 10 or 15 minutes, Mr. Gunner and myself, and then six minutes to the audience. And each member gets an, a full minute, and we'd, we would, well, I would suggest they address issues. You'll notice the whiteboard here has some issues, and I couldn't get them all up. I have about 600 issues, I think. But in the meantime, uh, so, uh, and I, first question, you ready? Ready. <laughs> all right, so, so Mr. Gunner, you do represent uh, a wide cross-section of certain people in our community who want my permanent fund dividend, right? No. Um, like I said, I, I am not advocating any particular um, approach to this fiscal, fiscal situation. It is absolutely true, it's absolutely true that a large number of people in leadership positions in Alaska, ranging from the governor to, um, you know, a lot of business leaders uh, to a lot of others have said that they think that um, uh, part of the way to address our fiscal uh, challenge is to, is to um, reduce people's dividends. Okay. And, um, and uh, I have uh, pointed that out. I've said that a lot, you know, this is part of the discussion. And I've also pointed out that this, this would be an option. This is one way you could reduce you know, the deficit if you reduced what you, what you spent, uh, give people for dividends and, and uh, you know, use some of that money for government. And I've talked about that. But I have not advocated that. I've said this is one of the options that's on the table. And, and um, I've, also, I've also pointed out, spent a lot of time pointing out that if you, if you uh, use people's dividends, that, is, uh, that would have the effect of financing this problem by taking the same amount of money from the poorest person in Alaska as from the richest person in Alaska. Except that actually it's taking more money from the poorest person in Alaska than the richest person, because the richest person, um, their taxes go down. Their federal income taxes go down if their dividend is reduced. But the poorest person isn't paying a federal income tax, so they, they lose the full amount. So I've pointed see. out that this is regressive. I'm not advocating it. I'm not advocating against it. I'm pointing out this is, this is an extremely important topic that's being debated in Alaska. All right, now, I want to define the moment here. Uh, I like Mr. Mr. Gunner, okay? So even though some of my questions might be pointed or predispositioned, at this particular time, I like the guy. So uh, <laughs> but the questions have to be hard, okay? Now, when you tell me I use the word advocate because I don't want an inference and it's in your window, in, in, in your window. Mm -hmm. but you and Cliff do wrap the package and deliver it. Now, you've got to give me that. Uh, the package being the message, and then we can go from there. Now, before we do that, tell me a little bit about ICER. You know, I, I pulled you up on the site, and I thought, Paul, how could you have challenged such a man of such mass resources? I mean, tell me, you have 35 people on staff, you have faculty, you have, did I just count 70 associate researchers? Uh, I mean, give me an idea. You have a, a large operation, right? Um, so, so very briefly, ICER, or the Institute of Social and Economic Research, it's part of the university here. It's one of um, a number of different research institutes that the university has. Um, most of the other research institutes are located in Fairbanks, but this one's here. It's been um, uh, part of the University of Alaska since 1961, so it's been going for about 55 years. Um, there's about 35 people that uh, work there, and um, uh, we study all kinds of social and economic topics in Alaska and have been doing them now. But what I want you to understand is that um, of the people that are there, probably there's only two or three that work at all on uh, Alaska state budget issues. Or, or um, you know, we have uh, economists, but we've got education specialists, health specialists, uh, anthropology specialists, um, and, and furthermore, I don't have those people to, you know, sort of command to, you know, study large numbers of things. Um, we are, uh, most of our, the money that we get from the state of Alaska supports our teaching and, uh, you know, well, with, if and, I and so on. So I so guess the short, if, there's, a, uh, you asked me about ISERS, so I'm telling you about ISERS. So I know, there's the it's brief taken longer than I thought. So 
I, I want to, if we can, did, I, there's a page, researchers, I, I count 70 people, 60 people? No, there's not 70 people. There, there are, um, at Two the moment, people. about 35, and of those, about 10 are administrative staff. So well, we've got good. The, the, the 35 25. is your staff, isn't it? I mean, the 35 is your staff. 35 I, I got, is the total staff. All right, so now, I talked to somebody, I noticed that, that I've seen you everywhere, and, and you've done a fine <laughs> job. I mean, I, I have to admit, it's been very well done, and... I was amazed at the videos and the places you've been. Uh, it's just amazing. So what did North Rim Bank pay you or contribute you to make a presentation? Okay, so here's, there, there's a lot of confusion about that. Um, he told me they gave you a certain amount of, I don't want to, I, I won't no, 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 I'll, I'll tell you all about that. The, um, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's the University of Alaska. There's a separate organization called the University of Alaska Foundation. And the University of Alaska Foundation is set up as a, as a way that organizations, private individuals like myself, I've often donated to the University of Alaska Foundation, and businesses can donate um, money to the university. But they can donate money to the, when, if you give a donation to the university, you can't, it's different from a contract. You can simply say, this is, this is money that's generally for, like, so you can say this. Do, so how much did they I'm donate? about to explain. For many years, North Rim Bank has donated $100,000 a year annually to the Institute of Social and Economic Research to support economic and fiscal research okay, so, at the Institute. So, but they don't control what it is. Okay, so now, it's hands off. Okay, so now, that's the amount, and that, that's what they've donated. And I might mention this. That's the only source of money we have to pay for fiscal and economic research. If, if we didn't have any money, if nobody donated, there wouldn't be any way to pay so, my salary for my time talking about this because the state of Alaska doesn't pay for it. So if nobody donated, right, so, we wouldn't be able to pay anybody right, so to work I, on these I, issues. I think we need to have equal time. I think you're spreading, I'm sorry. It, out, okay, spreading I'm sorry. it out a little <laughs> thicker, okay? Because I, I want to get into it now. Well, I'd like to get the foundation down first. And, and I consider you and your, your collaborator, Mr. Crow, to be, to be, a, grow, to be a, a formidable presence, okay? So tell me how that works. Vince Beltrami comes to you, and he's with the Teamsters, and he's with the Public Employees Association. Tell me how that works. I mean, tell me the convert. I'll be, I'll be, you be Vince and come. To, I'll be Gunnar Knapp. Tell me how that works. Uh, Gunnar, I'd like to have you, like to have you uh, make a presentation for us and uh, how, how, roll that out for me. What? Well, it works the same way as it worked with you. People call me up and say, "Would you come talk to our company?" By the way, I've never. I mean, I've been in the same meeting that Vince Beltrami's been at, but I've never actually spoken to the guy privately, so I don't really know him. Um, for those of you who don't know, Vince Beltrami, I think, is head of the Alaska AFL-CIO. Right. But I've, I've, never, I've never had a private conversation with him. But in any case, but if he were to call me up and said, uh, hey, the AFL-CIO's board is having a meeting, would you come give a talk? I'd say, I'd say exactly what I said to you. I'd say, sure, when did you have in mind? Yes, and sir. I'd just call and say, talk to my assistant. She can tell you when it's free on my schedule, and we'll set something up. All right, so now... So Vince, I'm using Vince as an example, but you've been many, many different places, many platforms. Okay, mm -hmm. I was uh, I was impressed. Okay, you've got the message down, uh, but it seems to be some type of a contained message. So, did you say Northrim Bank had contributed a hundred grand? I, I missed that. Uh, Northrim Bank, for many years, for many years, has donated generously to the University of Alaska Foundation. Um, and um, uh, for many years they've donated, given $100,000 for the purpose of supporting economic and fiscal research at the University of Alaska. That's the only stated purpose. Right. It's not allowed to be anything more general. So, they've so, also, by the way, donated to scholarships for this school. They've, donated, they've given, uh, you know, given a variety of uh, other things designed to you know, well, well, advanced wait, Gunner, I, I get all that, but I'm trying to get a feel here for how all of these people can come to you to make presentations, and you tell me you don't have any money, but you've got a tremendous staff here. And again, I, I think that you are advocating, but it is not a, it is not a strong advocation. It's, a, it's by inference, and let me give an example of that. 
Where, where's the $2 billion budget that we would use as an itemized $2 billion budget? Where, where's that that we would use as a model, as a fallback or fall down position? If the stock market goes south and the oil companies shut down, the new energy designs come online, which we think accelerate very quickly, where's the bottom at? Why don't we get to see that? Uh, to make my case around that, I don't consider it a $4 billion deficit to be tractionable discussions. You can't work with that. You don't have a $4 billion deficit, ladies and gentlemen. You have a $4 billion out of control spending. And nobody wants to address that, but they want to take my permanent fund dividend. Now, I'm giving you a little bit of discontent in my position so that it's not, so that it's openly observable here. And I tend to get more discontented, okay? I don't want to make it an anger management moment, but the point is, I want to drill down, Gunner. Okay. So, so, so how, where is the $2 billion uh, model itemized budget that shows us a floor? Okay, well, you'll recall when I started out and gave my introductory remarks, I said there's two things that I tell audiences. And one is that I'm not here to advocate what we should do. And the second is, this is a really complex topic and there's not time to cover all of it. Now, often I encounter the situation where people say, well, you talked, and you didn't talk about X that's really, really important. And you're saying, for example, well, you haven't talked about how could we cut our budget down, you, you say, you're saying, and first of all, there's a lot of people, a lot of people in Alaska believe the, the solution, the solution to our fiscal challenge, they say, is to massively reduce spending. We're spending 5.2 billion, we're taking in less than 2 billion. The solution is to cut that budget. And, you know, people use terms, cut the bloated state budget, etc. A lot of people in Alaska fuel that. Um, and so now that leads to a question of, okay, it's a very reasonable question. So how would you cut the budget? And what that, I've done that, in my presentations is I say, I say, here is the budget. Here are different parts of the budget. Here's where the money's going. And I'm saying, and I've said, this is what you would need to cut. But now if you want to talk about designing a $2 million budget, well, I mean, I could, uh, I could hypothetically do that, but usually that is not what most of the audience that I'm talking to wants to hear. They want to hear if I've got, you know, if I've got 20 minutes, they don't want me to spend the entire 20 minutes talking about what part of fish and well, game well, and Gunner, so on now, I would cut. Now, let, me, let me get some... But I think it's a very valid question, me, how, what, let, what could we cut? Right, but now, let, let me, perhaps maybe I need to define my position, okay? Okay. Just so the public understands this, uh, I'm very concerned. Uh, I'm some, somewhere between uh, staggered and amazed at, at our political leadership's position. And it seems to be linked to one thing after another. It isn't just one. Uh, you get a hold of this thing, and it's like a badger. It's just one thing after another that these people are, are, seem to either be uh, out of control or absent, absent at critical times. So here's my point. Why you, the, our, the bureaucracy, we're really talking about public employee, uh, we're talking about public employees here, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about compensation plans. We're talking about people that have been feeding off the oil money now for 30 years at least. Now they've been getting 70% of that money all this time, a mere 30% has been going to the permanent fund or thereabouts, this, this isn't totally accurate. So now they, they've blown through all that money and now they want to come for the permanent fund dividend. Unbelievable, this is just, un not only that, they want to try to collateralize the fund itself so that they can loan against it, so they can go after some cockamamie pipe idea, which uh, ExxonMobil I think is playing them because they want to send rich condensate down instead of barrels of oil, which has much more value to it. So they're going to play with, with a $60 billion fund all they can. But now, like Gunnar said, it gets complex, okay? Here's the point. Three to five years, they're going to lose this money. They're going to piss it away or they're going to lose it. And then they're going to tell me, well, you know, it wasn't me. I'm going to say, how'd you lose this? It was a stock market uh, or it was the oil companies or it was, uh, let's see, the, the Federal Reserve or the WAN or the environment or something. And I'm going to say, just a second, for three to five years, you drew a salary of 50 to 100 grand a year and I drew down a grand. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't draw down a grand, that's right, because you wanted to raise taxes, you wanted to raise fees, you wanted to do a, to do a cost of living increase, you wanted to raise my property tax. 
I'm lucky, ladies and gentlemen, to have anything. So you people walked away with 50 to 100 grand for three to five years. Now, I, I find that to be unparalleled in, 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 in an unjust act. It's just, I can't even believe they're asking for this. They, well, they spent the money, then they want to spend our money, then they want to collateralize the mortgage, put it in debt, then they want me to pay them more money, and then in the end, See my point here, Gunnar? Right. I mean, I'm trying to put it in the harshest of terms I can and the, and the most emotive, emotional terms I can. Why, well, why would I give this well, and, to these but you, and I mean, that why, why, so audience. that's a very, so I and respect I get, that. I and so a lot of people, a lot of people, no, but a lot of people in Alaska share your viewpoint. They're really pissed off. They go, they go, geez, all this money is being spent uh, and um, for all these you know, all this government uh, to pay all these high-priced people, and, uh, and um, now the oil money's low, and now they want to tax me or take my dividend to pay for it, and, uh, you know, and where are they getting off? Well, um, now we're getting into politics. So I'd say if, if you, as an Alaska citizen, I feel that way and you think that, you think that the spending <laughs> needs to be reduced, then what you need to do is to tell your legislators or organize or run for office and um, and, well, now, and me, do wait, what wait, it takes. Let me, wait, let me, let me, let me interrupt you because Cliff is behind you making gestures okay. here. But there, I think we're now time for uh, the audience and the schedule we put out. But I, and there's a microphone over here. And while people line up to, to want to ask questions, I, I will take a, a, a point that since my name has been raised several times to make uh, Two things clear. Uh, number one, I was the principal legislative staff member when the permanent fund dividend was created and written about it more than anybody else, just in terms of sort of my own roles. So you should, make be sure you should be griping even more. Uh, but the, and the other thing is, and I always hate to brag about these things, I personally am making the exact same amount of money standing here before today as I made for modeling and stand-up comedy combined. It's a round number, number ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to brag about it, but I, I want to make it clear that I get nothing for this. So we'll start out with our first question of uh, no more than a minute. Uh, I guess from uh, Vanessa. Could you go up the microphone? Because remember, we are being taped here. Sure. Hello, my name is Vanessa. Um, one of the. You. We can't hear you. Is she on the mic? Is it a sign? There we yeah, go. Yeah, it is on. Um, one of the many questions that I've written down so far is um, for the residents of Alaska, um, what money is being out, put out for um, the. Uh, state budget should be transparent, I would imagine. Where, where is the budget for the state viewable by the Alaskan residents? Well, the short answer is um, it is extremely frustrating to me. It's, it is far harder to get information about state spending than it should be. Okay? The information is hard to get um, in, a, in a way that's easy and makes sense. That said, there are several places where I'll briefly describe and then we can talk more if you want, okay. where you can get this information. Okay. There are basically three different agencies that, state agencies that put out versions of budget information. One is called the Legislative Finance Division. And they, they have a, and these you can, I, later I could write on the, write these on the board and you could, you could Google them. And they've got, um, they're the, actually the agency that puts together information for the legislature itself as they're working and says, here's what you're spending and here's what your budget calls for. And you can see all that. The problem is it, they tend to put it in so much detail, like in these 300-page documents, you can't really yeah. figure To make out, it difficult for, I'm it makes sure, it difficult. everyone. Then which... there's another organization which works for the governor's office called the Office of Management and Budget. And they prepare, they prepare information for the governor, which they also put out saying, Here's how much we've been spending, and here's how much we think we should spend. And then there's the Division of Administration, which puts out what's called the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. And that's a giant, many hundreds of pages report that's actually the financial reports of the state of Alaska, and you can see exactly how much we spend. All these things are so hard to actually understand, because the budget's really complicated, and there's many kinds of spending that if, if you say, I just have a simple question, I want to know what are we spending on the university, you can go around hunting for a long time. It's not easy Typically, to find. Typically, that's red tape that I would imagine they make it difficult purposefully, because I know my budget 
for my lifestyle and living is transparent. It's not, you know, lawyer, lawyer type Lawyered of up, yeah. Um, yeah. dialogue. I, I don't have to, I wouldn't give someone a, a book the size of a dictionary explaining, you know, the difficulties and explaining so my I think you're budget. Frustrated. By the way, ICER, where I work, from time to time over the years, we've put out summaries of the budget that try to translate for the average person and what if is anything spent. you know just align items like we have the simplicity this position like the town of healy where i come from uh the the mayor actually is public views of uh what he gets paid which is per year salary and his benefits and his perks now i know that a lot of people in senior positions are also given like you know um, a lot of free stuff and I think that a lot of that stuff needs to be looked at first before um, the uh, residents of Alaska uh, my second question real quick is that um, if there needs to be a reduction in the deficit um, and this affects every resident of Alaska do you think there needs to be more options than the PFD being taken? What other options are there instead of this? Well, they're, they're sort of mathematically, there's only four possible options that we have. The problem is we used to, we used to get so much money from oil revenues that um, it could pay for you know, almost all of state government and for a lot of state government. Okay, and now the money from oil is sort of 90% of it's disappeared. And so the options are, the only way you can fix that is either draw down your savings, which is what we've been doing. Okay, but the problem with that is if you draw down your savings, then you run out. So that's not real good. Or you can cut spending. You can say, okay, we have less money, we'll, we'll reduce the spending. Or you can... Um, but say, well, we'll have taxes, we, we, and people don't want the taxes, and, the, and just, or you can say, well, we'll pay less money in dividends, or you can say, well, we'll save, we've been adding to the permanent fund, and you can add less. So those are, that's mathematically, all, those are all the options I can think of. Do I like any of them? No, I don't like any of them, but it's like, if you, if, Is, if you have so a lot less money, you're, you're stuck with doing something that, um, you're saying so, the PFD is the only way. No, I didn't say the PFD is the only way. I'm saying the PFD is one of five different, one of five different ways. What are those other four, please? So the other four would be to spend less. Let's say somebody wants to. By the way, if here's a way you could think about it. Let there's been talk about cutting the PFD to a thousand dollars. Okay, so that would save, that would give the state about seven hundred million dollars. So if you say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. So what are other ways you could do that? Well, you could cut state spending by $700 million, mm -hmm. right? right? Or you could have an income tax, a, pretty, a fairly steep income tax would raise about $700 million. Or you could um, draw down your savings you know, it, 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 um, by $700 million, but that you run out after a while. And there's something that's the hardest one to understand is we've been depositing extra money from the permanent fund earnings in the permanent fund, adding to it every year, something called inflation proofing. But, but you could I, not do that. So those are mathematically things you could do. So you have other choices, you don't have to, but if you do, if you do less of dividend cutting, you have to do more spending cutting or more taxes or something. But, I'm sorry. No, I'm no, no, don't be sorry. Uh, this yeah. is, these are, my, first of all, are you done, uh, Ms. Patterson? I have friend? just one more question sure. that's my last one regarding that. Um, as residents of Alaska, um, like the other issues in the state, um, I would imagine that these options would be possible voting options for the residents of Alaska, as in um, it's not um, a decision that's made a, among politicians, that it's actually made by the people since it is affecting each and every person. So these, or how do we go about voting as people or getting it to a voting position so that everyone can be heard since it is affecting everyone? Okay, so there you have to think about the, that question is about how our government operates and how we make decisions. So 
the usual way we make decisions like this is the legislature. The legislature goes to Juno and they make they make decisions, um, and uh, and they can and they can basically do whatever they want within certain restrictions. There are some kinds of things they can only do by changing the constitution, and then the people have to vote. Now, the legislature, if they wish, if the legislature could do this, if they wished, um, they could say. Golly, we don't feel comfortable deciding this is really too, too important. We want the citizens of Alaska, so we're going we're gonna to hold a vote, some kind of vote, and, and, um, and then uh, that would be a way to do that. But if you wanted that to happen, you'd have to persuade the legislature to do that. Right, so now, actually, about 14 years ago, they did have a vote. There was a proposal at that time um, to actually Sort of, it was a, there was a proposal that would have pretty significantly changed how the permanent fund worked. Get cash and we had a vote, and the citizens voted, said, no, we don't right. like this, and, and so it didn't happen. Gunner, Gunner, wasn't that an advisory vote in 1999? That was an advisory vote. In 1999, yeah. yeah. All right, so now, if I, if I might, let me back up a minute. I, I, I take it as there were audience questions, then we'll go back to Paul. I guess. All right, did you say I defaced your character? You didn't say that, did you? I, oh, I didn't oh. use that word. I said you raised, you used my name several times, oh. and I wanted to well, make a couple things clear. Because you're a team, I see you everywhere. You're part of a team. Now, look, I, I just think, let me right. just respond to that briefly. It's really important. What Cliff, Cliff has been a highly visible person in this public discussion. He's been in many different places talking about this issue, many times on his own, many times um, with me and various things we've been invited to. This is really important. Cliff is not making a cent. Cliff is doing this has been doing everything he's been doing related to this because he cares, just like you do, passionately about the state's fiscal situation and he has expertise right. and knowledge so, and so he's gone. But nobody's paid him a cent. I, in contrast, am a high-paid university employee. Now, let's, let's so cut that's no, a, no, Well, no, let's, I just let, want to no, say no, one thing, wait. Paul, though, is I feel very fortunate to be married right now, otherwise you would have really cut my, my value <laughs> in the dating so, market, so Gunner, but fortunately, uh, I'm a very good wife. <laughs> Yes, I'm, well, I'm, the only metro sex I'm going in is I want a piece of and, Andrew Halgrove's ass. And I, and I don't mean that you're metro, on I'm that, talking Paul. about intellectually, because that man has berated the public one after another. You're on your own on that, Paul. Or another. Paul, yeah, you have a question I, for Gunner. I, I, want a, I want a hard discussion with that man. Now, now, if I might, Gunner, now, let's get the hard stuff out of the way. Again, I, I want to mention to you folks, I like uh, Mr. Knapp uh, at this particular point in time. Anyway, so look, <laughs> what's your annual salary, Gunner? <laughs> this is going to sound stupid. Um, I don't know. I can tell you approximately because the reason I don't know is because yeah, I give all my, uh, my shoot, me all my money goes to my you know, it just goes into my wife's account and, and so right. on. But um, I think I must be one of the highest paid people so in how, state government. Come on. You're, it's you're, somewhere over two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, now how much is your salary, uh, Cliff? Well, that's really embarrassing now, but it's zero. So you live on nothing. Well, I've made you some have, savings. Did you have a pension from the state or from the school? I have a, 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 a pension, but mostly I live off savings. Well, that how I made much do you live off? The, what's your pension from the state? Is it from the state? I can't remember. I have a PERS pension. Yeah. I, how uh, much is it? Um, right, I can't remember so, for sure. Something right, between, no, fifty, I, I something between on, fifteen hundred and two thousand. Let me. Years. I'll just let me wait, give, wait, it, well, give let you let an let opinion. Let me finish a off month, here. Month, I, I live on nine hundred dollars a month. Nine hundred sixteen dollars a month. Now. The point I'm trying to make to you is, I'm trying to show you the contrast here. This is a man who makes 200 grand a year, which is 13 or, Jesus, it's gotta be 20 times what I make a month. Now the point is, that if we were ever gonna have a frank discussion of, of contrasting positions, this should be the moment. And this man has stood now, don't you, I'm a man with a lot of, a lot of dispositions, but I have certain principles, and you have to give credit where credit's due. Gunner, thank you for working that out finally to tell me a rough idea. I don't know where you're at, Cliff, yet, but now here's my point. Well, I just, want to, I just want to interject and please. Cliff, it seems to me you're getting into Cliff's privacy. Cliff is not working for anybody. Cliff is getting, Cliff is a very dedicated, caring person who cares about the state of Alaska and has done, gen, generously donated his time like you are donating your time and and he's doing, he well, is, I don't, look, so I don't even, I don't even know the guy, I don't even know the guy, and I love the guy. I think guy, you're out of line asking well, him how much money he, he's got saved up. So, no, I didn't ask him that now, so anyway. I asked him if he was taking a state pension. 
I am. And I he does, that. but he doesn't know what, how much it is. Now, here's the point I'm going to make. So I'm, no, no, this is, this is what we need. we need. We need hard discussions. Families are broken. Sectors are broken. Morals are broken. We need, if we're going to lead, and Alaska has a chance to lead. There's big stakes here. We need these hard discussions. I make $916 a month. Now, that's it, period, okay? Now, here's my point. We need to be able to discuss essential services. We need to decouple the public employees from unions. You cannot be a public employee and be a member of a union without being a communist. It just isn't possible. You cannot, what's, what's happening here is the public is, employee is a, sector has grown. Is there a question here for Gunnar? Well, yes, there is, but he took enough time to figure out the 200 grand. You still haven't answered my question. Yet. Between 1,500 and 2,000 a month, I recall. All right, 30 grand a year, so I don't know what. It's up on less, right, close I'm, to 1,500. Yeah, it's a state. And what I want to see is a number of people that are drawn down the state's money. I'm trying to tell you something's terribly wrong here. And when they come after my permanent fund dividend and then want, want to tax me on top of it, and nobody wants to cut education, nobody wants to cut health and social services, nobody wants to cut, uh, uh, let's see, what was it? Here? Oh, that's right, the, the, uh, the budget reserve fund, which was set up to subsidize the, the PERS and TERS. I mean, the whole thing is just, it's, it's ludicrous because we're not having the hard discussions, Gunner. Now, Moving past this moment, uh, we'll get back on where, where's the beef, Gunnar? Why aren't you saying, look, we have 600 employees and they're double dipping. We have uh, 1,500 out of the educational system. We put them out for 20 years. There's uh, 68,000 people like Cliff that are making 30 grand a year. Why aren't we looking at the numbers, uh, Mr. Gunnar? Why aren't we hard drilling, drilling down? I, I don't understand this. Well, I think that every question you're raising is, ought to be part of the discussion. Where's our money going? How many people are earning what? Um, is this necessary? Are these things out of line? So who should do this? Okay. So who, should, who should do so this? So let's walk this out there. And, you and, uh, and so I'm... So, well, wait, 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 ma'am. No, and and so I'm saying, I'm saying that I think that that's information that ought to be out there. Okay, now and our, so I'm saying we ought so, to have an informed, okay. let me finish. You asked me a question? Those are, those are perfectly reasonable questions to be asking as we're, as we're facing this debate. So we ought to be demanding of our legislators give us this information okay, of now, our state government. Okay, now, now but I, I, let me just state where I am. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to get out and say, folks, here's some information about what's going on. I get, I, people call me up and say, can you talk? And I say, sure. And they say, we want you to explain the situation and you have 15 minutes. I say, okay, well, let's start with the basics. And then if you say, well, how many, and if you say, well, let me ask you a question. How many people do we have that are double dipping or any, how the hell am I supposed to know? Okay, now, Gunnar, now, hold on just a second now. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to I back this up a little bit here now. I challenge you to all day, that's eight hours, right? Uh -huh. So we got three more of these, right? Are we going to do three more of these, hopefully in the evening when people can attend, right? We, I think where we said it, we have, and we'll talk about this later, if there's interest after our time runs out today, we have another, uh, another time reserved uh, you know, in about two weeks uh, where, where we can continue a discussion. So um, we'll see. I mean, I'm not going to commit to sitting here eight hours, if, uh, but if, if it comes to that much, All right. sure, I mean, we, it's my job to we, we engage both, in these kinds of discussions. We both agreed that this was an exploration. This is unknown territory that Mr. Knapp and I are entered into. When you look at the content of the character, the professionalism, the accomplishments, the, 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 the community credibility this man has, and certain entities, sectors of our society using him as a point man, and Cliff there with him now, and no offense, Cliff, these are point people, okay? Now, the point is that in trying to get to these people to have the discussion, I ran across Mr. Knapp in the back of the Andrew, Andrew uh, William, Wendy Williams in theater. The man didn't have a, I don't think he had a clue who I was, and I challenged him because they always break up the meetings, and I asked him how much he made, and he rolled it out for me right like that. Now, Mr. Knapp, that's, I, I hold you in high regard for that. That goes a long ways with me, okay? Now, to continue on, I want to get a lot of data points in here, okay? Are you in favor of moving the capital to the Anchorage area where we can participate? Yes or no? 
Well, I, I'm going to answer that question. Well, I'm waiting. I'm going to answer that question, but first I have to explain the context that I'm going to answer it in. Okay? There's kind of two people. There's me, an Alaska citizen, with a, you know, I've got opinions on everything. Okay? I've got opinions on who I want for president. I've got opinions on, you know, how the city government should spend its money. I've got opinions on, on this fiscal crisis. There's me that's just me, and I would say my opinions are based on my own personal preferences. And then there's me, the professor, <laughs> with, on, Gunner, well, hold on, I'm coming to it, with professional opinions where I'm saying, hey, I'm somebody certified, smart person with a PhD, and I'm giving you my professional opinion about this, okay? So we and, and so I'm coming to it. My personal opinion, but this is not a professional opinion, is that we shouldn't move the capital. And why? And, is that? and, and why, my personal so opinion is because I don't think it would save us money, and I think it would really so, ruin the economy of right. Southeast. So then, but so, I want you to understand, I'm not, rep, I'm not out here saying, I'm not out here, you don't hear me going around saying, don't move the capital. And if there was a discussion, and if, there, and if, we, had a, if we had a debate in Alaska, Somebody said, what do you think? I'd say, I have no professional opinion. I think there, there are reasonable arguments on both sides. You could, and here, here, you know, I could probably list 10 reasons why it might make sense to move the capital and some reasons why it might make not. But I would never say, I'd never say, I'm ISHA director and I'm here to tell you that we ought to or we ought to. That's not, that's not my job. Right, so that's why, and that's why I don't go around in this fiscal debate saying this is what we ought to do. So, here, so here. I have a personal opinion on these things. But I'm not out here advocating, so I have no professional opinion one way or the other as to whether we ought to move the capital. I'm, that's not my expertise. Okay, so now, here, here's the problem I have. What's, what's the total amount of money we pay Alaska Airlines back and forth to Juneau? How, I, mean, I mean, this is like, I, I, I'm looking at, I mean, what's the total cost of the Juno of 25,000 people? I mean, I, the magnitudes of expenditures mm -hmm. that we're doing without any kind of accountability, without any, as the Ms. Platter brought mm -hmm. up earlier, with, with clarity, uh, with uh, all the transparency, Jesus, one term after another anymore. It's all the traction terms or in, in attraction. I mean, how do, you, how, do you, how, do you, how do you gather your people when they can't even get to the site? I mean, well, I mean well, how do you, how, let me how just, could you? Let's say, let's say we were going to have it, maybe you want to have this. Let's say we we're going to have a, dis a discussion, a debate, should we move the capital or not? And so you could sort of write up reasons for and against. No, but and, so, gonna, and so one but, reason, if, if you said, well, we should move the capital from Anchorage, well, certainly one reason for is, I mean, I don't know what the numbers are, but they must be pretty darn high what both government spends to um, you know, sort of fly people back and forth down to Juneau, and also what individual citizens have to spend. If you want to go talk to your legislator during the session, that's a steep price. So certainly, it's expensive to have a capital in a place like Juneau. So that would be that would be, certainly be an argument for why so, you so let me, let might me, want to okay. move the capital. So let me, Gunnar, here's the, here's the difficulty I have. I have lectured the public on talk radio and other formats that most of the things that you enjoy today or we bitch about is based upon unhurried discussions, fearless men and women who would, would, would take these points and, and throw clocks away and argue and not be concerned. So you have me at a disadvantage, but some of your answers are, are so professional in their structure that I don't get time to, to, to run data down here. So, so I'd like to kind of come back. What a, what a, I mean, the, let me give you an example. And, and this, is, this is the nature of a complex discussion. It can go many different directions, and it's just the normal. You have to, it's just how it rolls. The governor, I voted for this governor because I wanted 16 to 18 or maybe 20% cuts, and he lied. Not only did he lie, he said that Juno is the capital. And here's the pro problem I have with that. I just saw the governor twice. Do you have a question? How does that work for you, governor, hanging out in, in uh, Juno all day instead of here? Okay, so when I see a public official like yourself, uh, Mr. Gunner, I have to beg the question, because you are part of us. You, 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 can't have the, you can't have the schizophrenia of the moment. You can't, on the one hand, claim you're a public official. On the other hand, you have your personal views. Okay, we, is, that we a have, question? is that a question? Actually, I'm not, I'm not, an, elected, I'm not an elected public no, official. No, but you're, not, you're presenting, I would say, you're I think presenting it would be mis, data. I think it would be misuse of my opinion. Sorry, see, I'm the, it would be misuse of my profession 
for me to be ISER director and, um, and let's say I felt one way or another about moving the capital, for example. I, would be, I think that would be quite inappropriate for me to go out and say, we ought to move the capital, or because I strongly believe it, or we shouldn't move the capital. I str That's not my job. And, and yet, my and job yet. is to do informed public policy research that as much as possible helps Alaskans understand an issue. And it's not my job to inject my personal Can opinion. Gun, Paul, do you have a question for Gunnar as opposed to Comments about the, the governor who's wait, not wait, here? Cliff, I thought you were supposed to moderate the audience, not us. Okay. Okay, so is it time for the audience? I thought you'd be in every Now, Gunnar, I want to back up here a minute. This is part of the problem. I've got, I've got the, the single family dwelling is, is the source of all commerce. Everything you see is beget, beget, or begotten from the single family dwelling. You either own that dwelling or you rent it. Period. Everything comes and goes from there. And the point is they're using our property taxes to create a K through 12 education, which is the second, third, first large, it's the biggest budget, right? It's the biggest number, what is it? 1.5 bill, something like that? 1.5 billion dollars. And those people are using those funds to set up uh, side groups, associations, the likes of which are advertising on TV to make the issue for that issue or not. You can't have it both ways. I, I'm not saying that you're a part of that, but. The infrastructure we've built is, Gunnar. We, let, me, let, me, let me put it in point, Frank. You okay, tell me I, where I I'm just, wrong. I, I don't actually Here, understand what you just said. I agree with okay. that. I agree with that. I've confused <laughs> myself. Here's the point. You ready? The public employees need to turn in their resignations statewide across the board. We need to start them all out again at $10, $15, and $20 an hour. And I don't, and I don't pay. You know, I don't pay for your babysitting and your investment plan and your your retirement plan and, and your divorce uh, consultations. This is real simple, ladies and gentlemen. You either want the job or you don't. Until we establish the fundamental costs of, a, of the government to us, we're going nowhere. That we have paid sectors of our society such large amounts of money. We've tooled them up, teched them up, grandiosed them in the society to where we no longer have relevance, Gunner. And, and here's where you come into this, okay? You're the point man, I can't get to those guys. You're being a decent man here being with me, okay? I, I cannot deny that and I have to respect that. But at the same time, Gunnar, where is your presentation that shows how many employees are double dipping? Right. Where, where, where is your presentation that, that says to me that, that, uh, that, that, that they don't even understand the tax on the oil companies? They don't have a clue of uh, these people, uh, what they're doing down, you can see that. The point is that you're not drilling down to the hard data and why aren't you doing that? Why, why aren't you showing me? Uh, see, see what I'm trying to say to you? Gunner, you can't be on the point, 35 staff, whatever you've got, and go to these places that are making contributions when you are part of the problem. And you are part of the problem because you're not defining the correct data to be able to, to resolve the problem. I want resolutions. I just offer them. There'll be no more unions. Are you you wait, wait, we're, 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 we're <laughs> Gunnar, I'm getting to the question. Can you answer the question, the question Gunnar? Um, actually, for the people, some people came in um, after we started, so let me just briefly review what, what's actually going on here. Um, what's going on here? This discussion happened uh, because um, at a previous presentation, uh, Mr. Kendall asked, was I willing to engage in a public discussion or debate? And I said, sure. Um, and because I've engaged, I've accepted all kinds of invitations, so that's why I'm here. And I came with no preconceptions about what the topic would be. So that's what's, that's, that's what's happening. We're having a discussion and, and um, it's proceeding in that way. And the other thing was we agreed, I think, both of us, that we would allow time for the audience. Okay, uh, and so and that's, that's, gonna that's what's going and on. We agreed, just say now, we agreed the lady deserves a question. This is like, this is like a Trump moment, okay? We're rolling it out. This gentleman's agreed to meet with me under harsh, not harsh, but uh, contentious, interrogating. You can throw the words down. Now, and for the young lady's question, it was, it was loaded up with inference, I think, or emotions, but I don't want to speak on her behalf, but this is what we do. This is what okay, we do. Okay, I'm, okay, but, okay, we have a schedule here, and at noon we're gonna take a 10-minute break. So if you have one more question, and then again, for the audience, we're gonna go to, yeah. but we can hold that. Why don't, okay, we'll have one question now, and then we're going to have a 10 minute break. Sir, do you have a question? I do have a couple of questions, a couple of quick, easy ones. Uh, Mr. Mr. Knapp, sir, um, during the last uh, couple sessions of the legislature, I watched gavel to gavel quite a bit. 
And I see that uh, when the uh, committee chairmen have interviewed some of these state workers, like the uh, Department of Revenue especially, they say they're six years behind their audit of the oil companies. How can you give any credible information on economics if they're six years behind on their audits? Well, first of all, the, um, uh, what they're talking about um, is uh, what the state does is when, when oil companies pay taxes, they, uh, the tax forms are, are very, very complicated. And, you know, because the, uh, accept it, <laughs> they're really, really complicated. And so these audits are, um, consist of going through these forms and, and sort of confirming that all the information is correct. And in the past, at some, sometimes the audit reviews have resulted in companies having to pay more, um, you know, or even substantially more, or sometimes less. But it's a, it's a standardized process. Now, um, so the, the, what the audits are finding out is, did the companies follow the law in what they paid? That's what the audits are finding out. As far as how much money we have, as far as how much money the state got, five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, we know that. We know how much money came in, we know how much they sent in in taxes. And we know that this year it's way, way, way down. And that is the fact that we're dealing with. Now the question is, um, so you could, it, it would be a very reasonable question is, well, did we get underpaid? Did we get under, you know, did we, and, and, and until all those audits are done, um, we won't know for sure. My general sense is that the audits that are going on are, you know, they may turn up 100 million, 200 million, and so on, but they're not likely to turn up billions of dollars. So we have a problem of a deficit that's like $4 billion. That's real. We know that. As far as the technical details of whether the company's payments were exactly correct, we don't know that. And by the way, we'll, we, you and I, will never exactly know that because that's confidential, just like if the federal government audits your income tax return. You know, that's not out in the public, what you paid, what they said you paid, you know. Okay, my next uh, question real quickly That'll would be... That'll be the be, last one before the break. Yeah. Would be... Um, Two phrases have been used in describing Alaska's economy. One is uh, market forces. The other one is uh, economies of scale. Now, as far as I remember, monopolies are illegal. And uh, I have a budget at home and during the last several years at gasoline at four and a half dollars a gallon, I did a lot of sitting at home alone doing a slow burn. Now, we have one refinery here making all of our gasoline. As far as I know, that's illegal, that's a monopoly. We have the privilege here of owning our own resource and the privilege of paying the highest prices for it. That doesn't make sense to me. If the people own the resource, they should be paying the least amount of any state in the union with an oil company. I have seen prices on gasoline in the United States as low as 98 cents a gallon. What the heck? Gunner, could you um, give us Okay, so that's, you want the one minute answer, the five minute answer, the half hour answer? There, there's a sort of, there's a complicated question. Three minute answer okay, would so be the, fine. Here's, here's the three minute answer. So a, a lot of Alaskans are really frustrated. What the hell, we're producing all this oil and we've got you know, these really high gas prices that we pay. We are, I think after Hawaii or whatever, the highest gas price in the state. So what's going on? Um, and um, there's, any time you talk about pricing, there's, um, there's sort of a lot of issues that come in. And so um, uh, one issue is, well, what does it actually cost them to make this oil? Okay, and then another, another question is, well, how much profit are they earning? And the third question is, is there anything illegal going on? Okay, um, and uh, is there price collusion, are they, uh, and so on. Now the fact is that, um, uh, so a lot of people have made the allegation over the years. Periodically, people have said, 
we are being screwed. We Alaskans are being screwed because um, there's price fixing or something going on that we're getting charged such a high price at the pump, um, and uh, and uh, and it's clear there's only before there was you know a couple refineries now there's just one, and so um, what the heck's going on? So at various times the state you know has done investigations and uh, to see if there's any evidence of illegal activity. As far as I understand, I've not studied this in detail. None of these investigations have found. Um, you know, evidence of illegal behavior. And, they, and uh, what the oil companies say, the oil companies say something and then a lot of the public and some legislators are not satisfied by that answer. So we have an ongoing debate. The oil companies say, or the refineries say, hey, um, we, we're, we're a small scale producer, we're a big scale producer of crude oil, but we're a small scale producer of gasoline. And, um, and so that adds to our costs. Um, and um, and we uh, and we we get you know basically the way refineries work in the lower 48 they sort of get oil and then they, they you know only part of the crude oil actually is used for gasoline and other parts go for jet fuel and plastic and other kinds of stuff and um, there's markets for all those other things and we don't have the markets for all the other things as well here, so that means that you get less value out of all the other stuff, so you have to get more value out of the gasoline. Anyway, they make an argument that in fact they're not, they're not making a ton of money, and we have the fact that this refinery in Fairbanks actually closed. So anyway, um, it, which doesn't suggest that they were making a ton of money. So I have not studied this in detail. I know a lot of Alaskans are frustrated. I know that several legislators have repeatedly asked for investigations, and this is a topic that um, I, think. I understand basically. So I, everything I basically that don't you know. Said. Um, I understand what you said very well, but the fact remains: we have a monopoly operating here, and nobody's doing anything yeah. about it. Okay, here's the deal. Here, here, price yeah. controls. But price here's, the, here's the deal: if there's only one company that wants to produce, that's by definition a monopoly. But ooh, what can you do? You can. If well, some, somebody else can come in and compete. Wouldn't the state's attorney general have something to do with that? I mean, I think, I think this, is, this is a very, no, I mean, the reason there's one company is because no other company has said, hey, we're building them. Well, okay. Well, but, um, yeah, okay, I, mean, so thank I, you. I think I get this. I, I, I'll say, folks, I haven't, all... I haven't studied this issue in detail. I understand the question. I acknowledge a lot of Alaskans are frustrated about well, this. Well, the agreed upon rules, so we can have um, a 10 minute break. It's here, out there. Let's have, so we're gonna we're gonna stop now for ten minutes and start again at twelve fifteen, and so um, under these agreed upon rules. So think of your questions for that. So, okay. So the the idea of selling state land has come up repeatedly ever since we became a state in two contexts. One, some people have said, uh, well, we should do this because it's a way to make money. Other people have said we should do this because it's better to have land be private land um, than, uh, than uh, public land because with private land, uh, you've got, you know, it can unleash private market forces. Okay, so there's two potential reasons why you might want to sell, sell uh, public land. So the state had various land disposal programs uh, over time. Um, and uh, this was really popular sort of back, and I didn't get here till 81, so I don't know the history, but I know that after I came here, there's still a lot of disposal lands. One thing about um, these land sales that the state had was they did not raise a lot of money. Because the fact is that if land is worth a lot less if it's not on a, on a road, if it's not platted, if it's not, doesn't have utilities, and so on. So the, the actual, so the amount of money you can actually make Tends to tends to go down pretty quickly. Now, early about uh, several months ago, um, one of the legislators said that, that we ought to be looking at this, and you know, a, as a as a way to raise money. But I think that what would happen, I, I guess, here's my professional guess. I haven't studied this in detail. Let's say the state said we want to raise uh, a lot of money, so we're going to put a lot of state land up for sale. The um, that would probably reduce the the more you sell, the more you offer the lower the price you're going to get. And so um, I think if you do the math, 
you discover it would be pretty hard to, um, I'm sure you could raise hundreds of millions of dollars, but that would be one time, um, and, and so on. So I think the other thing is you're going to get pushback because a lot of people don't want to sell, like that's Chugach State Park right next to Anchorage. You could sell that, there would be high value commercial property, right? You could, uh, uh, but a lot of people in Anchorage would object, well, we don't, we don't want to sell that. So you'd have a tension. So it'd be prob So I think the reason you haven't heard more about that is partly not everybody wants to sell state land, and secondly, a lot of people think, well, we're, it's really not that much money. But it is definitely an option the state would have, and um, I just haven't heard any legislators pressing for it. And then a if brief I, other question. Um, about what year was the budget in Alaska at $2 billion? So in other words, how far back would we have to be thinking for kind of a mental reference if we just cut all the way down to what our revenues are bringing in? How many years back are we going? <clears throat> well, um, first of all, if you to if you adjusted for inflation for today's buying power of two billion, it's been at least it's been um, you know the the, the it's been f since before oil started flowing. Okay, um, if you if you looked in when we last had an actual budget that was around two billion dollars, um, I think that would have been sometime in the in the mid you know mid eighties. I'm guessing, but I don't. I don't have the numbers in my head. It's a very easy to find number. So the amount, that two billion, if you adjusted for inflation, I don't think we've had a budget that low f since, you know, for th at least 38 years. I, I could be wrong on that, but I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, are, there, are there other audience questions here for the next five minutes or so? Yes, sir, please come with the microphone. Got to go to the, sir, that microphone. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Warren West, and uh, Gunther, this is about the third economic crisis I've been in since Alaska, and uh, I know the oil spill uh, <laughs> covered quite nicely the uh, last one we had, but uh, I, I guess my question is, you provide the analysis on, on what's going on, and right now it seems to be, well, we need to raise individual taxes, we need an income tax, uh, we need more participation from all of us Alaskans, and, you know, all of us people here, including yourself, with this economic downturn that we're in right now, have tightened our belts but it looks like the legislatures are still unwilling to do any of that. Uh, was any of your recommendations uh, and your analysis to say, a state government, uh, you know, we can't afford the size of what we have now since we've we put in over 10,000 new people in the last 10, 15 years. Has the budget gone up or down in the last few years? Well, uh, Just to go back, real, real quick, quick mini history of uh, Alaska's oil. Since the oil started flowing from through the pipeline 38 years ago, we've had two big periods of sort of booms in state oil revenues. And um, so the first one was in the early 80s. Oil mm -hmm. came in, oil prices went up. We got a tremendous amount of money, and then we had this long slide. Where the you know it was up and down, but basically the amount of money went down, 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 through the 80s and then through the 90s, and then uh, starting around 2003, 2004, oil prices went back up. Another tremendous boom, another huge amount of money, and then the um, money fell way off the past four right. years. Now what's happened um, during the um, and what happened with state spending was pretty much the same thing. When we had a lot of money, the first boom, we spent a lot of money. And then, it, it, then the spending just got cut back, 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 back in the, in the 80s and 90s. Um, and then when the money came back, it, the spending took off again. And, uh, but for the past three years, 
they've cut back a lot on spending. They've cut several billion dollars out of it, but it hasn't cut back anywhere near as much. So that's the, the sort of first part. They have been cutting, but the, but the spending is still way out of whack with the revenues. And what I've said, what I've said is not either, therefore we have to cut a lot, or therefore we have to have taxes. I've said, therefore you're going to have to do something because this can't continue. This can't, because the- Right, the, it, it and, is and unsustainable. So you, so you have so. to, so you, the, you don't, we don't have the luxury, I mean, you either have to spend less or find more money. And it's, and that's the, that's the choice. Um, and uh, you know, and so some people say, well, it's clear the choice is spend less, reduce the spending. That's obvious. Other people have a different view. But I haven't said the answer is to cut spending or the answer is taxes. I've said well, you're going to have to choose. Can I can I interrupt you for a second, yeah. Warren? Are you done, or do you have more questions? Oh, like that? no, it was it was just the. What they have right now is unsustainable. Our last three governors have stated that, but uh, I believe that what we have at the moment is unsustainable. Right, and and we do too because we're seeing it everywhere. But uh, this is the <laughs> greatest state I've been in and the nicest place to live. <laughs> but, so, uh, uh, I I just wish somebody would would put together, you know, a sustainable budget and recognize that in lean times we have to be leaner and in fat times we'll go ahead and you know as long as you're saving during the fat times we did otherwise we wouldn't have the right. ruin and fund uh, but, so uh, it, so it just uh, we're I think we're just all frustrated because our current legislature is unwilling to do either at the moment you said they did cut that's true but they cut out of the capital but uh, Capital budget and nothing out of the operating budget. Is it, actually, Gunnar, is that true? Uh, the operating can, budget can I, been cut. Cliff, just, can just I, very briefly, for the five-second answer is, um, the legislature has made cuts to both the capital budget, especially, and some to the operating budgets. But a lot of people, uh, an awful lot of Alaskans, don't feel that the cuts to the operating budget have been anywhere near significant enough. Okay. Now, if, if I could, uh, thank you. I want to have a discussion you and I had earlier when we were off the mic and you folks weren't here. Uh, I told Gunnar I, I was probably being a little too mean or something. He informed, tell him what you told me, Gunnar. I don't know what I told him. Well, no, this is what, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm angry. I'm, I'm pretty upset. Believe you me, this is big money here. Uh, I'm, I'm very concerned about the irresponsible actions of our leaders. And, but it's hard for me to direct that discontent when only Mr. Gunnar's here and Mr. Gunner is the one who's delivering the message. And then he's claiming, well, I'm not advocating this. Well, no, but you're certainly delivering the package. And I assure you, it was my package. It would be a lot different. But before I get there, Mr. Gunner informed me he worked for the fishing guys, right? No, no. What he's I, had, I, well, these are not tough times. It's when men threaten to beat each other up and jump over a seat that these are tough times. And, and tell them about your fishing stuff, because I want to share something with you. And then I want to make my point, OK? Okay, uh, you're used I, to I tough think, times. I think what, what, no, what, what, what I was talking about was um, this sort of we've had a somewhat heated discussion at times and arguments and so on. I was saying, hey, I'm used to this. The reason is I spent a lot of my career studying the fishing industry, and, and if you hang around fishermen, you know there's a they will beat they, you they, up. That's right. There's a lot of conflicts in the fishing industry. A lot uh -huh. of conflicts. People feel pretty strongly, and and uh, I've been in plenty of situations where, you know. The whole audience is calling me an asshole, you know. So I'm, I'm used to <laughs> so, that. I, you know, so I, I don't mind that, and you know, and, and, and whatever. This, and this is the point I want to make to you. Now I've never shared this before. It'll be a first. My hometown had the world's largest self-contained radioactive tailings pond. It was owned by the grandfather of nuclear power, Commonwealth Edison, Chicago, Illinois, and it had the Manhattan Project in it. It was in the deepest coal mine, with the deepest coal mine shaft in North America. They contaminated my town, and believe you me, the story went international. And they threatened to beat me up and did mail bombs and couldn't go to the grocery store. And Jesus! So when when men of what you've got here is unique in the sense that Mr. This is a very accomplished man. I'm a man who's been in a lot of different places. And I just don't like to talk about that. But the point is, I'm, I'm happy what we're having here. I respect Gunner. I have to go for him because where is Vince and the boys? They're not, but they're using this man to deliver the message. 
And he's doing his best, I think, as near as I can tell. All men are corrupted to some degree. But the point is, I think he's doing a fine job. And it needs to get meaner. And I've been places. I've been places at public hearings where 1,100 people show up. And I'd ask the, the moderator, the, the guy in charge, how, how do you do this? You only get five minutes. He said, oh, no. When it's this bad, you give them 30 minutes. You don't, you don't shut it down. And this is worse. These are big times coming. So here's my, here's my point, Gunnar, I want to make to you. Uh, if you, if you pretend tomorrow uh, the, the stock market went down, you lost every penny you had, they think they're going to introduce fusion this year, if you write down ecat.com and ecat world, the fusion. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something moving out there I've never seen before in my life. It's unbelievable what we think is going to breach. Unbelievable. And we have a chance to launch first here. And I'm open gunner. I will have another discussion and we'll engage that in a, in a, in a more friendly manner. But the point is this, if the stock market went down and you got zero and you got $60 billion, whose money is that? Who says it, Gunners? It belongs to us, right? Why don't we just divide it all up? What's the problem here? How can these people want to take the money, take the money, 50 grand a year, and then take the dividend, and then tax me? Uh, uh, the insanity of that, that, that assault on me is beyond belief, Gunner. There's no sense of, of, we should be starting back here right now, and the way you start back here right now is, is you have essential services, ladies and gentlemen. Essential services, there are five of them. And I, and I don't want to take up the time right, I just want to bitch out here, but the point is that you flush the toilet, because without sewage, I assure you, believe you me, who has sat in the bathroom and thought about that toilet? You'll love that toilet. You gotta have sewage, you have to have water, which is hydrogen. No such thing as water, it's hydrogen. Got to have that. You have to have electricity, ladies and gentlemen. You have to have garbage, or garbage will pile up and it'll, it, will, it will insult the next person's territorial rights. And the fifth, which I've added to, is communications. I am staggered by the community, just staggered by communication. Unbelievable what's launching out there. Those are the life essential services that are undeniable. And here's what's interesting. You ready? Now, those are coupled with the dwelling. It is from the dwelling which everything is beget, begat, or begotten. You will freeze to death in that dwelling without the life essential services. In that dwelling, ladies and gentlemen, you either rent it or you own it. But your taxes, never ever again can you property tax for somebody else's wages or compensation or investment plan. We have to stop that right now. And what I'm trying to tell you is that if Alaska grips this, if we come together and argue and cuss and she didn't even threaten me, but the point is, if we come together, we get to solve the problems that these guys are going to have to encounter. They're coming. Who of you me they're coming? Don't you think they're not? They're trying their best to avoid them by printing the money. But we have money in the bank. So if we come back here and we address this issue of starting all over with a reset, I think we have a tremendous potential. From those essential services that we all agree to, that we all share, each and every one of us, doesn't matter whether you're black, white, doesn't matter your gender, whatever it is, each one as an individual being has a preference and a right and individual freedoms that we can't transgress. And that's to have a dwelling with the life essential energies. And from those five, and I, don't, I have, a, I have a, pr, a slide, but remember, Gunnar and I, this is, this is, he's exploring here. Don't you think he's not? So am I. Uh, we're all learning here today, and you're witnessing this. And I hope it's going to go further. But from this ring, the single family dwellings in the five essential services, toilet, water, electricity, communications. And by the way, the fusion, you are not going to believe what's coming. You're never going to want for energy again if they're right about what's coming very soon here. But so we're headed there whether we like it or not. Energy is no longer going to be used as a means of, of capital generation. But the point is from here, you walk it out. What do you need next? Hospital? Policeman? I can arm up. Hospital? I don't care if anybody saves me or not. School? School's no longer a school. School is a means of revenue using the children as a revenue generation point. It's breeding out of, I mean, well, anyway, my point is that you get what I'm trying to tell you, Gunnar? You're, you're not bringing us the hard data where we can argue about it. These, everybody's hiding out because they're all gaming the system, and they're going to take us right off the edge because uh, if that stock market fell tomorrow, what would you do? It wouldn't be sixty billion. Where would we go? Gunner? See, we're we're missing Gunner. Gunner we're not response to that. Well, Paul, I'm just having. You're framing. 
these issues different from, I guess, the way I would frame them. So I'm not quite sure where you're coming from or what you, what's your question for me? What? Yeah, yes, I, I'm I agree. not sure what you're. Sometimes what you're looking I, for. you've made a you made a statement, and I'm. Sometimes I bundle my commentaries where it's hard to address one. I'll give you that. What I'm telling you is to pretend today that you go home, the stock market falls tomorrow, the dollar is zero. You lost the permanent fund, and the pipeline gets shut down. Where would you begin to take that $60 billion and set it over here, and no one gets to touch it? Where would you start your society over again? We have to get back to essential services. Communities, are, you cannot eat the money, Gunner. You cannot eat the money. We have to begin over again. And Alaska has a chance to lead the rest of the world because these people are going to face this either in cruelty, means of cruelty, or, or something, what's coming. So wh where, do we, where do we start? You're making 200 grand a year, Gunner, and, and no offense, but you're hiding out. Well, I'm making, well, no, no, the, uh, somebody the, um, might be offended, but. I, the, I guess the way I'd say, first of all. I'm not paying for your retirement, Gunner. Let me put it in frank terms. You're not taking my permanent fund dividend to pay for your retirement plan, and, and Cliff's 35 grand a year. Actually, um, your multiplication's wrong. It's way less than that. But Gunner, please respond. Okay, so um, I guess, first of all, so, Obviously, if the stock market fell to zero and if the um, uh, oil industry shut down, our economy and our, uh, our national, our, our state, national, state. global economy would all be in a world of hurt. State. Uh, okay, state economy would be in a world of hurt and um, uh, it would be an extremely serious, difficult, difficult situation that would lead to an unraveling of a lot of the, you know, a lot of the wealth don't people stall have. Don't stall it out. Don't stall it out. I'm Peter. not trying to say that'd be that'd be totally tough. You'd have to. Um, I, I guess I I don't spend a lot of time, Paul, trying to think about what exactly I would do then because I just don't see it as that likely. We have a real problem. We have a real problem as it is. Why well, worry well, about a problem that's well, even well, worse that take, we're let's not take, facing? Right, let's take it from this view. I want cashed out, Gunner. Well, I make, okay, it so a, make it to be $100 billion. So if you, want, if, you want, if you want to cash out the permanent fund, that's a, okay, you know, that's no, been proposed. Okay, no, no, wait. Let's see if it's, if it's got some foundation. $100 billion divided by 700,000 people is 150 Gs. 100 million acres is what they're sitting on in land and trust. If you divide that by 700,000, that's 150 acres. I want mine in 10, 15, and 25 acre random lot draws so I don't end up on a glacier. I want in GPS coordinates, I want my 150 Gs in the AKUSA, not a, not a bank, okay? And then we're all, we're all good, we're all even. We'll start all over again. And here's the irony, Gunner. When we come back here, right, to, to Anchorage, mm -hmm. those people can leave with their 150 Gs, but they can't take the land or have ownership. We'll spread that out. And then your Alaska will boom because once they hear that 700,000 people got 150 Gs, you're going to have to hire Trump to build a wall to keep them out. What I'm trying to tell you is this, Gunner, that you're not, you're not bringing forth the data. You're bringing forth, you're, you're, you're wrapping the paradigm or the narrative around those people who've become an aristocratic elite, an aristocracy <coughs> on themselves by hanging out in Juneau and saying, my daddy's been here longer than your daddy and therefore I deserve more than you deserve. And the irony is they brought these people up here paying the dividend fund so they can run as social services to make 60 grand a year. I mean, are you seeing the looping action here? We've totally lost the mission, Gunner. And here's what really upsets me, that, that, that instead, of us, instead of us leading the rest of the world as Alaska, because we're so unique with a lot of money and isolated rich re and resource rich, our legislators are hanging out in Juneau hiding out down there in some Zen moment, constructing deals in secrecy, and they're using you as their point man to run interference on the front end because you seem to be a decent, well-prepared, engaged man who can suffer the likes of a, of a man in, my, in your president, you and Cliff here. Go back. Okay, okay well, let me, let, me, let, me, uh, let, me, let me respond to this. Look, this is, this is all we got, and thank God we got it. We have... A constitution. We got a United States Constitution. We got a state constitution, and we got a government, and and it's all we got. We have to make it work because the we have to we have to we, we it's a flawed government. It's a flawed constitution. It doesn't get 
us what we want. It leaves us deeply frustrated at times. It invariably leaves, because people have widely different opinions, it invariably leaves lots of people totally frustrated. But it's all we got, because the choice, if you don't go, if you don't live by your constitution and your government, the choice is anarchy, war, and so on. And so what I'm saying is, if you're a citizen and you're discontent, all you can do is work within that process to try change. If you don't like what the legislators are doing, change the legislature. If you don't like what the national government's doing, change the national government. And if you say, well, it's frustrating because I can't change them, who put them there? Who put these legislators there? Alaskans voted for every single one of these legislators, and they voted for the governor. And if you don't like them, change them out. But governor, and if it's too hard to change them out, then work harder because yeah. it's the only choice. But you, you're back to blaming us again. Even no, I'm saying, I'm saying I don't know what else to do. Because you're sure not going to get changed by telling a university professor the reasons for change. I can't change it. But, it but the here, legislature but, but, can change it. Okay, but here's the problem, Doug. And how, so you've got to, you, what you we, have to do is, what you have to do is convince the people. If you think we ought to cash out the permanent fund dividend, if you think we ought to fire all the, the state employees, cash out the permanent fund, if you think we ought to fire all the state workers and go back to, you know, uh, take it or leave it. You know, yeah, no benefits. To, if you think that, go fight for that. Run for the legislature. Elect people that will no, do he, that. Here's the problem. Uh, here. But um, but w no way are we going to have a society where everybody can have their way just because it makes sense okay, to them. Gunner, if I might now, just a second, Gunner. Here's the difficulty with that. I'm paying you two hundred grand a year, right? You by yourself, Gunner. Well. Gunner, I, I can do raptor well, discussion. The, no, the state, the Gunner, state. I'm paying you 200 grand a year. That would right? be more like the oil companies are. Okay, and then um. I share it, right? And you're about to take my, but you're getting more than what the oil that I the oil companies what I get, right? You're getting 200 grand of the oil company money, and I get, well, I get the dividend. That's all I get actually. But the point is that what I'm trying to tell you is if we don't bring the bureaucracy under control, like the land sales, you could sell the land out, and they'll come for the furniture next. They'll come for the firstborn next. You know that, Gunner. If you don't put a bureaucracy in check, which is what this is, they can't get enough money, Gunner, and you represent them because we're paying you in a credible institution worth hundreds of millions of dollars to develop information to make the case that is limited to a limited discussion and engagement. And not only that, but the facilities are limited. Um, this is, if we don't lean on you people, the ones that we've conveyed uh, a high degree of accomplishment, we put you in a university, which is the perfect world, Gunner. I can't do what you can do. I don't have a staff. I don't have that kind of. You see, it, it always comes back to making us the fault. And that's why I asked you, you want to move the capital. And I can't attack Vince because they're not here. And I can't get Ron Duncan. And I can't get uh, uh, who I really want. So, uh, so what, you're say, but what you're saying, Paul, is you're saying, I'm frustrated. I'm pissed no, off. You're, you're I'm saying you're, you're, or you're frustrated, or you're pissed off, or you're yeah. really angry, or whatever, yeah. because I'm sitting here in the university and I don't agree with you on some things. And you go, how come, how come I, as a citizen, have to put up with you at the university who doesn't agree with me? That's what I hear you saying. And I have, and, and on the other hand, I go out and I talk to other people who say, hey, I really appreciate what you're doing. So what can I do? What can I do? All I can do is try to ethically say my job is to as think as hard as I can and objectively try to give people whatever knowledge and analysis I'm Here, capable of. And if you say if you say I don't like the way you don't like the way I'm framing this or or or, or so on, you know, I'm sorry I'm doing the best I can. Yes, and uh, furthermore, if you discover across the if you say the university isn't working right because I'm feeding you a line or whatever, um, I think uh, there's a lot of people around the state who will disagree and say okay, so, that I'm not feeding you a so, line. So let me counterpoint this. Here's the problem with that, okay? And thank you for your fine to honorable defense. I, I love men who <laughs> lay it on the table, okay? We need a lot of that. Here's the difficulty. I'm not coming to you for something. Don't you see, you, you get something already and you now want from me. What, what am I asking from you? I mean, 
you, 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 you tag team this in a circular discussion, it's now my problem. But they listen to you, but they don't listen to me, but I give you the resources under which you can, you can compile that, that narrative. And then you decide to compile that I just hate you because you're making 200 grand a year. And that's not the case. Along with your accomplishments in the community and, and your, your position of accomplishment, it, it makes you accountable to, to the, us people. And, and, you, and, and that's why you're here now, Gunnar. Well, what I'm accountable uh, so I'm not, to, I'm not really... I'm, Paul, what I'm accountable to is, and I believe every public employee is accountable to this, to try to do my job as best I can, as best I understand it. It's my job in the university, it's my job to, in, in, in a research unit to try to objectively do research yeah, to try to help to inform the public. Yeah, but you're about to take my money, You're about to take my money, Gunner. I, what do you You mean? being a public employee is a well, member of the university. If, if the legislature, if the legislature comes and reduces your dividend, that's the legislature. That's not the university. No, because, because what <laughs> happens is I give you money and you form coalitions and you put them on TV and you form a voting block and you drive the politicians that I voted in office that were, thought were going to represent me. It, we have created this monster that is eating us up from the backside. Hey, Paul, Paul, I just spent half the winter working on a report on how different fiscal options would affect Alaskans. And I wrote specifically in that report, I said, if you take people's dividends, you will be taking more from the poor than the rich. Yeah. And, and I, I don't know, and so you, and I so, don't know so, how so you call that so, taking your dividend. So, I call that pointing out well, pointing no. out the, um, uh, the nature of the choices we're dealing That's with That's a godly intervention that you have nothing to do with. Now listen to me. Don't listen. <laughs> listen. Here's the difficulty I have with that is, where's the report that tells me how many state public employees they are and what is their net grossly net revenue income? I need to see the data and they won't show the data. We need the hard data. I need, where is that $2 billion budget that shows me where we're going to go? Why won't they take the money and give it to all of us and meet in Juneau and say, let's start over? No, Gunner, because somebody's you're, you're, gaming so the wait, system. What you're saying your is, you're mad at me because I don't have every single answer here. I haven't studied every possible part of this question. I can't give you all the numbers. I'm spending all my time trying to dig into this. I happen to have on my computer all kinds of files where I've been working when I could find a little time when I wasn't doing meetings like this to try to dig into the state data to say where is the money going. But that is, if I'm gonna do that honestly and objectively, which is the standard I have to work up to, I have to do that carefully and it is not then, easy to put together this why information. Can't you go to so the you're deal? going, how come you haven't come up with all the answers Pretty much to give you a, to, to everything you want when I'm plugging away at it as best I can to now get look, out information. Now look, Gunner, the night, the day that they, you took my challenge, sitting behind me was a man, with that lady sitting right behind her, there was a man there and they told me, you know why Gunner took your challenge? Because behind him was a dean. And I'm like, well, a dean? The point is that he nodded. Now here's my point. Why aren't you taking this to the, you're the epitome of the intelligentsia. You represent the fat, the very cream of the crop, the, the tip of our society, why aren't you people gathering up and representing us and telling them, get your asses out of Juno, out of Beijing, out of that dark abyss, and get up here and engage your people on an ongoing basis, because we have a, a lot of things of a magnitude no, like no, no, we've no, never hold seen. On, hold on. Why, why aren't you obligated to us to do that out of a sense of moral obligation, not a contractual, just be, or a, a Paul's discontented moment? No, no, there, there you're talking to the wrong person. If you say, Damn it, I want research on this, this or this. That's the question for me. That's a very valid question for me. If you say, damn it, why are you in Juno? Or why are you trying to take my dividend? Go to your legislator. Well, ask the them that. They're hinged. I can't uh, My job is to do research. My job is to do research. I work for the university. My job is not to go out. I don't make these decisions. Well, what my job is to do... I, I'm a researcher. Gunner, what, what happened? I understand the collective, but, but what about the community that we're all here together, Gunner? Now, I, I, I refuse to accept that. They, they hear, these people come to you, Ron Duncan, the leading, the premier communications company of Alaska. These people are coming to you to, to, to land the message. 
I mean, I, I don't see how you can separate yourself out and sector yourself out mm -hmm. and niche yourself out and then say, I'm not out of you to do that. The, the moral issues is an overwhelming, compelling engagement. I don't have the ability to look at your, the facilities you have at your disposal and not to mention okay, that. Now, I've now mind. spent as much time talking with you as I have with Ron Duncan. Well, he makes a lot more money. I mean, well, I know he does, but I, I, I'm sure he. <laughs> no, <laughs> sure right, he must. Yeah, um, but you're more uh, powerful, Paul. Uh, uh, <laughs> so See, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, right? you know, I'm uh, trying to figure out exactly. I'm trying to tell you the natives are restless, and we want our people to lead us. I'm telling you, Alaska. I cannot right. stress and this so enough. Then Alaska go has to a chance your to lead. Legislator. I, and say, no, I'm Gunner, frustrated. That, Gunner, you can't, they're you, the, they're Gunner, the people. Gunnar, listen to me. I call, ladies and gentlemen, if you think I'm just up here frothing at the mouth of some <laughs> pseudo-intellectual moment, I'm a little more than that. I wrote each one of these people a request and signed it. Love for 90-day Congress of the people. 90-day Congress where we could, we could review in, in, in unhurried, respectful, and whatever moments we want, on camera, educate all 22 agencies. I asked them, you know what I got? Uh, I'm not sure I got the uh, memo. How many, how many people signed your letter? If you get 100,000 people to sign your letter, you will have a 90-day Congress. See, this is the problem. The, uh, the, this, this, the this, problem no, is not no, everybody no. gets their way. No, you this are is in our society. No. This is a, no. a dim you're, you're defining the problem in your question to me. Now, I get this, okay? Yeah. Let me tell you something. Davis said to me, you know, Paul, it's, you're great. You're, you're really an insightful thinker and talker, but there's no people behind you. And I try to explain to you, what the hell is that? In my world, it is the content of a man's commentary and the context to use it. Either it has merit or it doesn't. This is the great idea in Paul D. Kendall. I'm insignificant in this moment. It's people like you that we've conveyed a great recognition of your accomplishments and your ability to communicate. You are a great communicator. And don't you tell me you're not, Gunner. Jesus, I've watched you. I had no idea you were spread through like Johnny Appleseed or something. You're all over the place. The point is, and these people, they're, they're putting you out front and they're running off. I can't get the Vince Bill trying me. I stood in front of the Captain Cook and, and pleaded with him, and 200 people back there and laughed. Vince is laughing at me. It ain't never going to happen. Ain't, I'm, come on, Vince. Okay, okay. And, and, and now we've come to a time, Paul. Why don't you give a, a closing statement and the agreed upon schedule? So we're sort of, is that your closing statement, or would you like? Well, I'd like to, I'd like to add something with a little less emotive. A little okay, why don't you do that now, Paul? In, 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 in what? Accusatorial nature. All right. Uh, well, I'd like to hear Gunner's first because uh, the schedule was you'd go first. So see, see. It oh, I'm there. willing. I'm willing to go first if you wish. I don't care. All right now, before you do, right? I want this. I want this understood. So, Gunner has been amazingly accommodating to me. I, I am staggered. Uh, I am a man of uh, of some engagements. I've been in some <laughs> difficult positions. Uh, I don't want to talk about myself. But my point, your fishing thing was a great story. The point is, this man has truly been accommodating, and I'm trying to understand what that is. What is the nature? So thank you for that. I'm going to let you go first, then I'm going to go, and I guess. Uh, I, Gunner, I, I, I want your buddies here. I want them all lined up back there, and, and I want a throw-down moment. I want some, dude, I want some bar brawling, rough talk moments. I mean, not hurting moments, but you know what I'm saying, right? All right. Okay, so um, I just come back to what I, what I said at the beginning. I think I'm very privileged to work at the University of Alaska. I think, I think part of the job of the university is to provide a place for discussion of ideas, to try to um, you know, sort of help people learn, have, help people have conversations. Um, and my job at a university is, for 35 years has been to research issues, try to help people understand them. We have a complicated, highly controversial issue here. I've been trying to answer questions. The talks I've been giving have been, because people ask, everything in my talks is questions people ask me. So you hear people want to, so I try to, they say, so every, that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to answer questions. Um, and I've been trying to respectfully answer, to the best of my ability, every question I get. People call me up on the phone all the time and ask me every imaginable kind of, and that's all I'm trying to do here today. I got an invitation, come talk, and, and I'll answer as best I can. 
um, I think a lot because I happen to get a lot of attention or people, you know, press covers what I say, people think that I'm sort of a front for something or I'm, uh, you know, uh, but the fact is I have tried to stick to my professional analysis, my professional opinion of these things and to try to honestly answer as best as I can and to, when I don't know the answer, say I don't know or when it's a matter of opinion to say that's a matter of opinion and you know and so on. That's where I'm coming from um, and uh, I'd say to any organization, I'm, you know, I mean I've got other things I've got to do in my job, I, other things, so I've got a limited amount of time but I'm always open to talk to Alaskans or try to answer questions. I have to balance what I do so thanks for the opportunity to come talk. Paul. Well, uh, I'm not sure it was an opportunity as much as it was a challenge, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm still uh, very respectful of what Mr. Knapp has done. So let me see if I can't. Uh, <coughs> the reason I'm here is I made, a, I made a request of the legislative body and some of the local, let's not forget the local people who represent us, to have a 90-day Congress where all the people could gather and put it on camera and go through all 22 agencies and drill down and see who's dipping, who's double dipping, who's taking, who's not taking, what our priorities are. These are things we have to do as a society. And I find Alaska to be a very special place. It's what I call a Genesis location. Something very, very special is here and I think we have a chance to, to lead the rest of the world in more ways than one. But this permanent fund thing seems to be yet another symptom that goes one after another. It's just unbelievable what I'm seeing here. Especially, I'm especially concerned about Juno. You cannot engage accelerating tsunami-like issues that are coming at an increased pace by hiding out in Juno or someplace where you're absent from the, the vast, vast majority of your public, your, your population, especially with the large number of people in Anchorage, Alaska, where all of our tools are at, our, our hub of activity. Now, Without getting into all the details here, we have to get back to basics. We have to start all over again while we have money. And if we do that, we have a chance to lead the rest of the world. And there's enough here for everybody to benefit, everybody to benefit. And it appears to me that what's happening is this. All around the world, in America, everybody is beginning to question the foundations. All missions are held together by foundations, and those foundations are established by priorities. The mission, ladies and gentlemen, was for our children to be a more free people, to explore the wonders of it all in a safe manner. That's what it was about. And somehow we went off the edge. We chased money and racial and gender and new world orders and economies. And in such a special land as Alaska, we have lost the mission. You cannot eat the money. You cannot eat the money. I cannot stress that enough. And we're all hunting the money. It's unbelievable. So here's my point. While everyone else is trying to change and struggle and make it work without hurting one another, and believe you me, we're seeing some, some real aberrations out there uh, uh, that are very concerning that we just, most of us don't talk about. It appears as if the leadership in Alaska has hunkered down into this aristocratic elite, this aristocracy of how long I've been here and the circles of feed off the permanent fund dividend and they're here to maintain the status quo at any expense. And in a special place like Alaska, it is unbelievable that I am having the, these contentious popcorn guerrilla moments of discussions when I should be seeing all of our leaders huddled up here with good, good, great comments. I want to hear it all, the stupid, the drunks, the oh, no, I got to hear this again. I want to hear it all because out of those moments come magnificent moments and I don't see anybody helping us. Now, Gunner, I, I can't, uh, I have to say this again and again. I'm hoping we'll have six more hours. Well, what I'd like to bring up is presentations and I'd like to bring up something about our future. I'd like to put it down in writing. What do you think we need to do? We need to go back to essential service. We need to decouple all public employees. We need to tell you, I'm not paying for your investment plan. I'm not planning for your investment plan and your compensation investment investment and it's all gone sideways. It's all gone nuts. 
our children are suffering, uh, the, the very fabric of the family, the patriarchal roles, everything appears to be aberrating or, or under assault in one way or another. So by us resolving this, because I don't think we're alone, I don't think we're an island, I think that we are, in essence, a bleed over what we're seeing in the lower 48. So I'm hoping that Gunnar will have this discussion again, and maybe he'll bring in like Vince Beltrami or, uh, God, what was that guy's name again? Andrew Halcrow just, just berates the average American when they want to save their permanent fund dividend. Yeah, the guy who called talk radio drive-by shouting. Uh, we need to bring in some of these people that are harsh and, and, and let, and let Gunnar step aside and let the Paul D. Kendalls have it them, okay? Let us have this, this dog fight. And, uh, and Cliff, did I leave you out? Did I leave Cliff? Cliff has been great. I feel but, like an insider but, with you, Paul. That's right. Uh, we're <laughs> closely embraced. We're, we're going to give the big best buddy hugs here if we're not careful. Now listen to me. Gunner, oh. when I went to approach Gunner, he realized right away there's more day and he was busy and like a professional, he lined up Cliff Grow. And it's the first time for Cliff and I to work together. together. And I just want to thank him and Gunner uh, sincerely. And I'll tell you something. Uh, I'm known as a man that can be a high maintenance or a, a difficult engagement at some times. And both of you have done, uh, you know, I'm, I thank you. So. Paul, you say the sweetest things once again. <laughs> so. We're going to call this to, um, to an end now based on uh, that clock. Uh, stay tuned for uh, what there may be in future announcements. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thanks.